welcome Alexa. Thank you for agreeing for this short um, conversation. We wanted to talk about um, how to use stuff that we took away from the Kyle training, from the Agile leadership training, and how to move that into practice. And uh, yeah, I'm curious, what would you like to start with? What's the challenge that you have or what's the tool you want to use and want to know more about? Uh, hi, Alan. Well, as just as we were discussing just now, uh, uh, something that stuck in the, the back of my head from my uh, uh, from my training session. Uh, uh, yes. Was how do we bring together uh, experienced tools or instruments? So it's really yeah. good to explore this with you uh, a bit further. Uh, a bit further. What particularly stood out for me is that how do we? I, I see a, a, a great value. I, I see. Wonderful value in, for instance, uh, um, going deeper with, with listening as a service. But it doesn't, uh, I don't see it as necessitating, for instance, the kind of uh, 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 planning activities or planning activities that, that, that we explored. So I, I was curious if you yes. could perhaps, uh, 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 perhaps explore it, how, how do we, for instance, bring these two practices together? Yeah. This is interesting because they are, in, in my mind, they're quite far apart. So they, they were, would not be natural candidates of how do these two fit together, but it's that, that makes this an interesting thing to talk about. Um, for those in the audience who haven't been to the course, just to very quickly sketch out what this is about. So listening as a service is a frame around using clean language in conversations where my main purpose as a leader when I'm listening as a service is, um, not so much that I understand what you're talking about, but that I help your understanding to grow. So any conversation where you want to be supported in your thinking or uh, where I think you want to or should be clarifying your thoughts um, would be benefiting from that kind of um, conversation and that kind of listening approach. So listening where it's not so much in my interest, but where I put my attention and my uh, sense making skills at service to um, to your benefit that's that's listening as a service frame and the plan is a plan without an a plan without actions so we plan outcome based we plan for evidence of the impact that we want to make with the actions that we might do um, it's a plan that lends itself very well to delegation. We plan through three time horizons that are rolling. So it's a nice strategic frame around any endeavor. Uh, could be a personal change, could be a company change, could be a project or anything. Um, and it's a really useful um, tool to frame our shared success. So let's say you and I want to do something together and we have this vague idea of conquering market X, then we would start thinking about what would be the indicators that tell us we're making progress on our conquest? Uh, what would success look like? What would be a few things we would want to see and hear? Uh, maybe behavior changes by certain people we're influencing, maybe customers, users, et cetera. Um, and all of these would feed into our uh, plan. How listening could help here um a whenever you write down something or i wrote down, write down something or let's say we have a few more people in the crowd and they write down indicators um it might be helpful to ask one or two questions around anything that you write down so i actually understand what you mean and that i make sure that you understand what you mean let's say uh, you write down a uh, new customer is satisfied and I would ask what customer and you go like huh? interesting question new customer now that person has a customer and satisfied would look like this I would know that they are satisfied when they do x and then we could replace that indicator with customer of this kind does X. So we, we have a more uh, clear understanding of what that specific kind of success looks like. And we have a bit of a conversation um, that is 
And that's the listening as a service frame where I'm putting my attention at your service so that you can clarify um, what you wanted to say with this bit. Another thing that how these two tools could come together is uh, while we are preparing for um, the project or whatever our thing is, we might be talking to various other people and ask them, let's say there is some sponsor in the organization who says, Alexa, Olaf, can you run a th an experiment exploring this option? And uh, then you might ask them, how would you know we're successful? Like if you want to invest in this endeavor, uh, what would success look like to you? Um, what would you like to have happen? And you could, you could use the clean questions to elicit um, ideas, requirements, whatever. So wh whenever we are in a conversation where we can help somebody clarify their thoughts, this listening as a service is a useful stance and various kinds of conversations would feed into our plan. And that's how uh, these two tools might be uh, using, that might be used together. I'm not sure if I got this, this last, last bit, uh, last mm -hmm. bit. But I definitely see, see, a, 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 see a connection there, see a connection there. And I definitely see, well, uh, 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 it, it almost feels as if uh, 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 an advancement to a, a planning, an advancement to a planning uh, 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 would result from, from actually engaging in this. In listening to the service as a, as a practice, in a sense that uh, it's such a, it's, it's maybe the same as a very point, uh, uh, but it's sometimes easy to to uh, to lose to to, uh, to, uh, to lose track of it, especially when you're an experienced professional, that you actually do need to continuously engage, not 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 only your team, right, but uh, yes, to, to engage engage your, your your clients, your customers, your market. Uh, uh, in, in fact, it's, it's a point being here, and uh, 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 your intuition comes as a result of, 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 of all these engagements. Uh, yes. uh, so even when it's uh, when, when, you know, when it's uh, when it comes from these profound sources of, of you know many years of experience and decades decades worth of experience in, of, of, of being of being uh, great in your field, uh, it still feels that. Uh, we need to be mindful of the fundamentals, which is, in that sense, uh, engage, listen, uh, be open. Yes. But engage this in this particular way. Uh, as you said, it's, it's not just uh, a simple act of, of, uh, of, of uh, well, being open to another person, which is, uh, of course, essential. Uh, yes. It's, it's all helping that person, in that sense, develop or, or further the, the point that they're, that they're making. Being supportive okay, yeah. is, is, I feel, essential. And I, yes. I, I feel that when we discussed that in our course, uh, it resonated with, with, actually it resonated with my experience with, with, with our clients, really. Uh, it's, it's just seems, it's, mm -hmm. it's so much more yeah. better than the feedback cool, loop, right? Uh, when when clients yes. they are being being spoiled by you, that it's you you are actually there, and uh, and they actually uh, do appreciate that. It's a uh, it's an important point to to make. I think I feel. Yeah, thank you. So in that sense, it's uh, uh, it's it's almost it's almost as if uh, uh, one would be a uh, one of manifestations. So, uh, Listening as a service comes as, a, as as almost as a as a value even uh, yeah and it's manifested to 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 another in that sense instrument the tool that, that we've got which is which is burning but uh, yeah interesting way to look at it definitely yeah so the listening as a service to me would be a very basic tool almost something like a stance that I employ every day sometimes maybe not all day every day but in in every conversation there would be some part where my intention is to listen so that other people gain more understanding 
um, that, that I help them support their thinking. Like um, most of the people we are leading in, in our context are paid to think. So as, as my um, responsibility as a leader to improve their effectiveness, to improve the context in which they work and to make that work better in some way, whatever better means in a specific environment, um, helping people to think more effectively is very probably a good leadership uh, activity. So whenever I'm in doubt of what's my supposed impact to be in a specific meeting or in a specific conversation, listening as a service is a really good default um, because like, if, if nobody asks anything more specific of me, helping you think better is a good default. Uh, it's not going on itself. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. also something that we reflect on during the during the course. Is that yes, actually, in that sense, as a leader, uh, and, and this appeal uh, is in that sense being access to to organization of any size. Uh, actually, the outcome is that you're looking for has to be at least in five or one of the outcomes that, that, that which you want to have is actually in that sense helping. Uh, how can you think? Uh, yes. Well, in the industries and the sectors, in, 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 in uh, well, in, in which I found myself in, and we, we have found ourselves in, uh, this is this is absolutely uh, uh, almost an imperative, I would, I would say. So yeah. It's 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 a valuable valuable tool, valuable, valuable stats, as you said. Yeah. Valuable stats. But how do you? Uh, Perhaps this, this is something that um, I, I keep on referring back to the, to the course, but, uh, uh, but uh, perhaps we can explore this uh, uh, in great detail. Uh, how do you feel about uh, different frames in terms of planning? Because, for instance, objectives and key results uh, has mm -hmm. been a, a popular one in software by yeah. for instance. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, I, I, I see parallels. Uh, uh, I, I definitely yeah. don't see in that sense. Uh, uh, I, I, I definitely don't see a, a collision with, with what's a no. technical stance. Or, no. or, or I, with, uh, with the cloning planning, uh, planning techniques. Yeah. I, I uh, chose the tools that we use in the, in the car training. Um, with a certain philosophy in mind. I wanted them to be compatible with what people do in organizations anyway, and many organizations use OKR nowadays. I also didn't want to teach something that people already know who are coming and um, that they can't use at home when their organization does not do that specific thing. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the plan is, a you could frame it as a, less formal way of doing OKRs. It has a very similar planning philosophy. It has a very similar outcome focus. Um, OKRs are more clearly uh, structured in terms of hierarchy in the organization. The, this is something that a plan does not have, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't use the plan to prepare for the OKRs and then look at which indicators belong on which level in your OKR structure, or that you can, um, you do the OKRs on one level, and then on the next level, you can use the plan to brainstorm and to, to like ideate what could our um, success system, success metric system look like so that we work well with the OKRs of the next level. And then we can rephrase those into OKRs for our level and then uh, use the same structure to communicate down. Um, the, the other thing that the plan has, which is very nice for regular conversations. So when we uh, talk about leadership being agile in the sense that we have a feedback loop for leadership, um, what I like about the plan is that it has this next week, next month kind of rhythm so that leaders can come together and check, um, did we see those things happen in the organization that we wanted to see happen? And they can be connected to the OKRs but they don't have to be. So an OKR would be in one sense, a more structured and more organizationally established way of doing the plan. Um, 
And a similar thing is um, about impact mapping. So we also do impact mapping in the course as a way of um, navigating different potential paths towards a specific goal. Um, and these are also two things that are very complementary. Sometimes you need more of one, sometimes you need more of the other, but both are very good techniques to support any organization in setting goals, being adaptive to uh, complexity, navigating complexity and uh, getting a shared sense of uh, what does success looks like, look like and how do we effectively invest money into the different assumptions we have about the future. And um, yeah, that's how, how I see these things interlink. And that's the reason why I chose these specific methods for the course, uh, so that they are maximum compatible with most people who come to the training. Uh, makes sense, makes sense. I like how elastic it is in a sense of uh, uh, being able to adapt to, to different contexts, different, different sectors, but different contexts. Uh, uh, for instance, I mean, uh, I can see working well with a unilinear implementation project with very clearly defined milestones, but it can work yes. very well in a more complex uh, 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 environment, in that sense. What we are trying to reach, uh, uh, would we, in fact, in that sense, need to need have an activity uh, as an outcome in of itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. It almost forces us to 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 stick with this way. And, and, and I like that. I like that a lot. It's uh, uh, I find it useful. I find it very useful as a, as a tool. And yeah, thank you. As a tool. But, yeah. Any other thing you'd like to know more about? Say again. Uh, obviously, these are these are all uh, uh, extensive talks which can be discussed at length. But it's it's uh, it's great to touch uh, it, it, it's great to touch it briefly uh, to establish yeah. these, these points of uh, points of contact uh, points where they come together in that sense. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other tool you would like to integrate more into this conversation? I guess we can do one more. Well, I'm just curious. Uh, 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 what what would you what would you, for instance, uh, 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 bring together? Uh, what, what, what would you bring, bring to the to the to this this conversation? How, how do you? What would be the tool that would come to your mind? In that sense. Um something that might connect well to these tools that we have discussed specifically to the plan okr uh, impact mapping thing um, is the high and low dreams exercise which is one of the most versatile exercises in the course where you can um, for anything that a group of people comes together you can elicit what do people dream about if this is successful and what do people dream about if this is not successful? So it's a bit like wishes and nightmares or um, the uh, method is from the organizational relationship systems coaching uh, body of knowledge, uh, which is described in Anna Rell's book, uh, Creating Intelligent Teams. And what I really like about this is that you can you can use it in very small and very large contexts. You can use it with small or large groups. Uh, you can uh, do it for look ahead at what do we want to get out of this day versus what do we want to get out of our collaboration in this company. So it can be really, really big uh, or really small. And it's a great and quick kind of brainstorming tool that elicits lots of things from a group and then you can use it in different ways for instance to feed into a plan uh, or to feed into a backlog uh, to feed into any other kind of planning um, structure that you want to use um, you can use it to uh, to frame a collaboration with a customer for instance if you want to think about like what might um, a new version of our software system look like next year and then uh, people could go okay this would be a really amazing this would be um, real nightmare 
I like this integration of thinking about what might happen as a positive thing and also think about what might happen as a negative alternative so that we don't have this unconscious bias of, yeah, this sounds great, but, <laughs> but we have this but conversation integrated mm -hmm. and we have an agreement in the group of what's the future that we want to avoid and what's the future that we want to create and that can create a lot of shared responsibility. So that's probably the, the next exercise I would kind of link together with these uh, to create some, some kind of chain that makes sense in, in many different contexts where we want to get together and align on what do we want to do? How do we know we, was, we, we will be successful? That kind of thing. Uh, it seems complementary to our outcome mapping or, or, or yes. learning in that sense. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a preparation exercise for that. Yeah, right. right. One, one one possible. Obviously, there are multiple others, but it's it's very nice and simple. It's also a great way to start any workshop. Like if this goes great, it looks like this. If this goes shit, it looks like this. <laughs> you can you can you can have a very quick conversation with a group of people, um, eliciting how well are they aligned around what they want or how much a conversation is still needed to align them, et cetera. I also like how that, how that uh, uh, well, uh, forced us to, to think about, well, to focus on uh, uh, or, and to revisit, in a sense, what we want to get out of the course. Yes. But also on, uh, on a deep level, in that sense, it, it reminds us that uh, uh, what we're looking to, that, that we need to be aware of what we want to get out of uh, specific uh, uh, engagement or a specific enterprise even. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a, it's, it, it also feels a fundamental point, but I'm reminded of it time and again. You know, uh, we won't be able, uh, uh, well, uh, in, in the end, in that sense, uh, uh, we won't be able to deliver for a higher organization if we're not mm -hmm. happy with what, uh, what yeah. Uh, what, what, what we're doing. Our emotional well being is, is actually essential to uh, to uh, Yeah, absolutely. And, and which means in a sense it's also central to the to the to the enterprise performance or the team performance in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I like this quite a bit. Uh, but yeah. Cool. But I think I, this is I this is at this point, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm happy to follow up on uh, in a different conversation. Yeah, yeah, this was great. Um, I think for an online uh, published video, this is a good time frame for people's attention to actually last this long. But yeah, I would happy to. I would be happy to continue a conversation like this in the future. For sure. So thank thank you very much for now. Thank you all. I I'll stop the recording now. All right.